Hello, Andy. How are you, mate? How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. Um, and I'm guessing that you've been keeping very, very busy during this very strange period. Tried to. I mean, there's been times when you know we couldn't leave the house for about three or four months. So, um, but I think like a lot of people, I spent a lot of time in the garden and doing DIY and trying to plan stuff. Well, initially, I spent a lot of time planning stuff for the rest of the year. You know, but then I realised quite quickly that you couldn't predict what was going to happen the rest of the year. Mm. So we'll probably be quite reactive with uh, with projects and that sort of stuff this year, unfortunately. But, you know, it's still been, I think, easier for me than for a lot of people out there. Because, you know, as we were chatting before we, we started this, we're not frontline NHS, you know, um, or indeed guys like, you know, delivery service or people working in the supermarket stuck in the shelves. I mean, they've been super, super busy under some difficult circumstances. Whereas, and even back at home, you know, I've got, I've said it before people, I've got a garden. Just, just having a garden puts you mm. ahead of a lot of people. So, you know, we need to appreciate the position that we're in. And, and, and my year's been, been not perfect, far from it, but it's been a lot better than most. So I've got to be grateful for that. And has it kind of made you appreciate even more than normal how important it is to get out into the great outdoors and do things? Yeah. I mean, I'm fortunate, again, I, we live right in the edge of a little village in the, in the Y Valley. So I've got a sort of forest right over my, my head, quite literally. Um, but you know, we, we, you, you never, or you don't tend to appreciate the things that are taken away. Um, so which is why on the 4th of July, the day that the campsites reopened in England, we jumped in the motorhome and we headed like 10 miles up the road in the forest and just spent the night camping just because it was nice to get away from the house and the garden, just, you know, which we had been kind of living in for the last three, four months, which is unusual for me. Normally I'm away on the road a lot. So, um, yeah, you, you do miss it. So nice little mini adventures yeah. is also one of the things you can do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we did, we did, we did lots of that. So over lockdown, we, um, we used the, well, actually we used the motorhome, because I'm fortunate I've got, I've got a motorhome now, um, for as a, almost an extension of the, the house. So I used it as an office, Bex used it as a recording studio, we used it as a classroom for the kids, uh, and even as a little sort of chill out room for whichever parent happened to have half an hour off just go and read a book, because it was kind of you know, apart from the drive, but it's almost like a little gazebo or summer house, you know, and, and, and the kids, it was a treat for the kids to kind of go out there and, and you know, uh, and, and use that as a classroom rather than being stuck in the house. I think psychologically it's nice to get out of the house, if you know what I mean, even on rainy days. Although Absolutely. there wasn't that many of them. Uh, and we did, we camped in the garden. In fact, we did four days. We, we, we locked the door in the house, went into the motorhome, we lived in the motorhome, and then we did a day trips, excursions to the garden. <laughs> So, you know, you actually all, locked the house though, so yeah, you, you no. deliberately didn't go back in at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. We, for, for, we should be four days, but it was, it was three. Um, actually, because cause Bex got coronavirus, well, she became symptomatic on, on the last night, so we had to kind of right. a little bit early. But yeah, we were doing, um, we were doing uh, you know, actually, I'd, I'd, I'd dress up, so things like, um, right, cause my, my kids are three and five, so like, right, kids, today we're going to go to our botanical gardens where you can get hands on experience as a gardener. You know, i.e., we're going to go and do some gardening, or we're going to a British safari park, which means we're going to go around the garden hunting for like, like you know squirrels and birds and bees and wasps and butterflies and beetles and worms and that sort of stuff. So we um, you know, spent sort of three, just under four days in the motorhome and in our garden, and that was it. It was good. It was good fun. And what else actually was nice about it is that having spent like I think by that point maybe a month in the house in lockdown. It made you appreciate your house again because we went back to the house after th after three nights away and opened the door again. It was like ah, oh, it was it was that way when you were going holiday for a couple of weeks and you actually yeah. come back home and you appreciate your There's house that again. Nice feeling again. You know, in bed. Well, yeah, it was nice nice to do that. Now I'm very conscious that um, lots of our members already know you, especially from your appearances at the show and on television and all sorts of other things as well. But one of the things that's happened over this period is that lots, we have lots more members, new members, uh, new campers, new caravanners and new motomers, and they may not have seen what you've been doing with the club. Just give us um, a quick flavour of the kind of things you do with the club, with the writing and the articles. And yeah, so I write a column most months for the magazine uh, on all different st subjects. I write articles for the magazine on either stuff that I'm with family or stuff I'm doing on the sort of adventure side of things. Uh, pop up at the show now again to say hello. Usually at the show, obviously, you're cooking. Yep. I'm, I'm eating what you're cooking, so we're not doing that today, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, I, I just like to support the club because I'm a big fan of people getting out and about in the UK. And I was happy, not just because of what's happened this year, 
but also the way the club supports. It's very inclusive. It's not just about people who own caravans and motorhomes or camper vans, because I appreciate, again, those aren't necessarily cheap, but you know, even if you own a tent, it doesn't matter. I mean, I started camping really a lot for work um, in a car. I used to just put a mattress in a car, and that was my sort of like when I first started camping. Um, so yeah, it's all about. It's not. It's not about what particular thing you use to camp. It's about getting out there and camping. Absolutely. Um, there are so many kind of things that are happening at the moment. Um, what's the thing that you focused on during lockdown that kind of kept you kind of interested mentally? Was that fitness? Was that food? Um, both, actually. That's so over lockdown. You know, you, you, you're trying to create projects that will generate stuff happening later on in the year. I'll be honest, I've made the wrong call the way through the year. I thought we'd be out of this by long by now, but um, I've been a bit, I think, naively optimistic. Um, but what it was a chance for, which is unusual, was I'd three or four months at home um, to, to train and, and to sort of eat really well. Because on, on the road, you know, it's like yourself. Often you're living out of service stations or hotels or, or fast food. You, just, you, you can't eat as well as you'd like to. So I had a real chance to, I mean, I do most of the cooking when I'm at home. So I, can, I looked at just, just experimenting with food and what works for me, what doesn't work for me, especially as far as kind of inflammation and recovery going. I'm not getting any younger, I find the knees hurt a bit more than it used to, the back hurts a bit more than it used to, so that, and exercise and, and, and training, being able to sort of build up, right, for the next three months, I can train seven days a week, and I can, rather than just kind of grabbing stuff when you can, being a lot more structured about it. So that was good, I probably are fitter and healthier um, at the end of lockdown than I have been for years, to be honest. And you've got a very, very interesting kind of home gym at home as well, haven't you? It's very, very cool, I have to say. Yeah, well, I... I investment that I, uh, yeah, I built basically a giant shed in my back garden um, and, and it was all about my own, my own gym so I built my own gym most, mostly it's a big giant climbing frame with a few things on it because most of my gym work involves swinging around some things about ropes and bars and <laughs> but, um, but yeah and, I, and it gave me a chance to focus and dedicate a little more time to kind of physio type stuff because what I've been bad for the last few the last 20 years is training 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 but not doing the, the little things the stretching the sort of the work on the support mm. and balance work, which is why I kind of, kind of fall apart really. So it was a chance, <laughs> was a chance to kind of you know try and drag myself back from the edge. Which uh, so you know I think as I said before, lockdown wasn't as bad for me as it was for a lot of people out there. But but still, you're like right, okay, this is what's happened. It's not going to change. <coughs> you know, the, I, I won't be working for the next three, four, five, six months. Okay, so how can I? best make use of that time? How can I mm. come out of this better than I went in so that I haven't just wasted six months of my life? Um, and doing a bit of gardening, a bit of day. We, we time the kids was great. I mean, my kids have never seen me when they're bored of me now, you know. But um, <laughs> I do want a little bit about when I do start going away again, how that's going to affect them, because been, I've been with them pretty much for the whole year. Kind of withdrawal symptom, symptoms yeah. now. Because if you go away for a few weeks, back for a few weeks, they get used to that. But now I've been at home for, what are we are now, nine, nine ten months. Mm. Um, and they've got a bit used to being around. So we'll, we'll see, but it's been good. Well, let's come back a little bit because one of the reasons that you fit so perfectly with everything we do here at the club um, is because of some of the things that you've done in your background. Firstly, military career first. So lots of outdoor activities there, I assume. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it camping as such. You know, it's often, uh, let's, let's call it aggressive camping. A more extreme version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But then when you left the military services, um, you ended up becoming a, a TV presenter on some really cool shows. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so I started doing my own expeditions and adventure projects, and then I started doing some safety work for like the BBC, like dive safety, climbing some bits of stuff, and then making my own little films on the side. And then that kind of came together when I started presenting on Coast. Uh, the last few seasons. That's a fantastic programme, isn't it, yeah. Coast? Yeah, it was, ten, it was ten years it ran for. It was, it was, it was, I mean, I joined, I think, Series 7, I think I joined. I was, it, was, it was well established when I jumped on board. Um, and I've done a lot of the, the sort of one-off science series, like Operation Iceberg and Cloud Lab. I did a really, uh, one of the ones I've enjoyed the most was an archaeology series with, with Chris Packer and Neil Orbach in Orkney, mm. um, about sort of the Neolithic Stone Age people of Orkney. That was, that was a great six weeks working up there. Again, I got to do, it was just Chris Packham, who I did Operation Iceberg with as well, which was out in Greenland. That was an amazing programme. Right, and he, he said both times, he's like, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not top bill, but you do get the best jobs. And with that, mm. he meant that, like, he does stuff, he chats to scientists, and he does this yeah. and that stuff. And I'm off, like, I'm staying down, 
glaciers and you know diving under icebergs and in Orkney I got to climb this amazing sea stack and I got to row uh, along with the Orkney uh, like rowing team uh, we paddled this basically Neolithic boat so it's a boat made out of cow you basically cow skin wow. and a bit of a wicker basket covered in cow skin covered then in fat cow fat and we paddled it across from Orkney to, uh, to Scotland Wow, you do definitely get some good it jobs, don't you? It was a cracking job. Which I, it wasn't that bad. Like, everyone thought it would sink. Like, no one gave us a chance. Even the RNLI, who were on call, were like, best of, <laughs> no, the best of luck. We had a safety boat with us, obviously. And they were like, great, it's all fine. You're safe as houses, but, I mean, you know. You're we not expect to rescue you, yeah. Yeah, because the Pentland Firth, that bit of water between Orkney and Scotland, is, I mean, huge tides, massive stuff, whirlpools and all sorts. Mm. Um, but from my point of view, I thought, well, this is not unprecedented. This has been done. Like the Neolithic people of Orkney in Scotland used to paddle back and forth that bit. So it must be mm. doable. And actually, we did it in like three and a half hours. We got to the far side and I said to the, the team, the, the, the Orkney, the, the horse from the, the Orkney club, I was like, how was it? And that was all right. <laughs> it was fine, you know. So it, wa it wasn't as extreme as everyone thought it would be. Fantastic. And then there are other things like the one show, which we love. That's yeah, a great one show. Yeah, one show still on I think 2014 I started on that. And I mean, I've not done much in this year because lots of that I do. Mm is out in the wilds and obviously we've been trying to minimise travel uh, th th this summer. Mm -hmm. So um, that's been quiet. I mean, uh, as is TV and film uh, this year in the UK. But that's, we've got stuff, all the stuff that I'd planned for this year for the one show has been postponed until next year, really, and cancelled. Mm -hmm. So that's been good. And then I started working for a, um, a, a YouTube channel, which obviously is a new territory for a man in his 40s, you know, <laughs> brave new world of YouTube. Um, but it's really nice because it's an it's, it's a electric vehicle, sustainable energy, sort of green living. And I'm, I'm, I'm big up my, sort of my wildlife, my conservation, sustainability and that. So that's an opportunity to kind of scratch an itch in, in that front. And what kind of things were you having a play with um, with those guys? Well, all sorts. So we've, we've I mean, they've got, they've got quite a few presenters on there who, who know about you know, cars, etc. So they, they got me in as the crash test. I'm, I'm normally wheeled in as the crash <laughs> test. I mean, it's like with the BBC, like I never, they never go, oh, we'd like to interview this, or like, you know, we'll do something with the red squirrels. It's like, oh, we need somebody to go cave diving or to jump out of a plane with rockets strapped to his legs. All oh, right, we'll better wheel in Andy, you know. He might be the worst present in the world, but he will actually jump out of a plane with rockets strapped to his legs. So, um, so for, 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 the, for the fully charged, uh, I'm doing stuff like motorbikes, uh, electric wakeboards, electric dive boats. We're looking at electric helicopters and planes, all the kind of electric submarines, all the kind of weird, slutty stuff. Um, but I'm hoping to do more stuff as well as the, on, on the conservation side as well and, 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 and how, you know, green energy and, and, and all the sort of high-tech cool gadgets that's being made by Tesla and all that. It's, it's great in and of itself, but actually the reason behind you know, creating better batteries and electric vehicles and, and, and better, say, wind machines is to try and make the planet a better place yeah. to live. It's not just because it's cool and sci-fi gadgets. There's a bigger reason behind it. Because you that. were saying that some, the, uh, the electric wakeboard, for example, you were recharging it with solar power. So yeah. it's, it's a very carbon neutral yeah. bit of kit. Absolutely. Well, the, what was nice is we did that out in Sweden. So the electric wakeboard, electric boat and the electric bike I was using out in Sweden were all charged from solar power. So, you know, you are riding around zero emissions and it's even the electricity you use to charge that has come from the sun. But all those three companies are supporting uh, an, a project called AIM Zero, which is started in Scandinavia, but hopefully it's going to sort of go further. And it's doing marine conservation and sort of clean-up operations using electric power. So rather than turning up to kind of do a marine conservation project in a big diesel boat pumping loads of fumes and, and, and fuel, they're trying to, they're like, well, I think it's, it's more kind of in keeping with the ethos yeah. of the project. And what a fantastic idea. Um, now, we, we do have to talk about the last time I saw you, yeah. you had just finished probably one of the best jobs ever. Um, yeah. Tell the, uh, the people watching what you were up to then. Yeah, so 2019 was a good year. I didn't do a huge amount of, of telly, but that's because uh, I, I ended up working as a stuntman on the, on the new James Bond film. Wow, and this is because you've got a whole, uh, I would say, a very particular set of skills, haven't you? There's yeah. a lot. There's, just run us through some of them. Skydiving. Skydiving, freediving, cave diving, climbing, a bit, a little bit of paddling, and obviously the X-Force and stuff. So that, yeah. all, that all helped. No, we didn't use, they didn't do all of them, um, but, but it was the underwater stuff that kind of got me on, on the job initially. 
Um, Which is classic Bond, isn't it? Underwater stuff as well, yeah. yeah. So did you get to work at the, um, the 007 stage at Pinewood a lot then? Uh, a couple of times, yeah. Not, not. I mean, it was used obviously continuously. Cause, I mean, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the stunt department is big, and I was only really a small part of it. Um, but you know, so you often, so people say, "Oh, you know, what's the film like?" Like, I don't know. I've not seen it. I've only seen the. You know what you've done. I know what yeah. I've done, and, and and that's sort of it. Even the other other stunts that I wasn't involved with, I don't really know what was happening there because you're kind of focusing on your own job. Um, but we did, we did the double seven stage a couple of times. And, and did you get to travel to some exotic locations while you were doing this? Uh, yes, actually, we did. So I, I started off uh, in Norway, uh, and this is, I mean, the NDA you've got to sign is quite big, but I'm, I think this is public knowledge, um, so I think we're okay with this. That we did some filming in Norway, we did some filming in Jamaica, uh, we did some filming in Scotland, very exotic, uh, and we did some filming in Italy. Um, or I did anyway, I thought, I, I think. And obviously Pinewood was, is the majority of it. And I don't think there was any other filming done. I, was, I mean, I was fortunate that I got to go to, went to all the places. Some mm. of the stunt guys were basically pissed at Pinewood the whole year. So I, um, I, was, I was pretty lucky. I just managed to be in the right place at the right time to get to, get to go to the trips. Now, you've done some incredible things already. Um, I'm thinking of a series my kids love, Beyond Bionic, yeah. for CBBC. Brilliant series. How did the Bond job rate amongst all the other great jobs that you've done? It was very different. Because I mean, everything's been like documentaries on TV. This is this was like a, a, a stunt on, on a film. Um, I I did enjoy it. I've got to say, and I think a couple of reasons. One one because I've been I'm a massive Bond fan. Always have been. Mm. We've, got, we've got three Bond pictures up in our kitchen, and that's they've been there for years. You know, it's not a new thing. Um, but the people were genuinely lovely. I mean, you know, I, I, you, people say so. You see these interviews all the time on, on TV, and people are going how how lovely everyone is on set. And whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I know on the Bond set, everyone that I bumped into, and not, and not just, I mean, the stunt department were brilliant. I mean, you know, I was new to the, the sort of movie stunts. So welcoming, mega professional, and just nice people, and just like really happy to turn up to work. It was just a really nice nice place to, to, go, to, to, to turn up to you know, on a mm. Monday morning. But then even like the, the special effects guys were brilliant, you know, all the way from the, the people who made the coffees all the way up to, you know, to the director. Everyone was just, I got on with everybody. It was just a nice, it was just a nice place to, to, to hang out. I think, you know, 90% of your happiness is dictated by the people you surround yourself with. So, Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, I, for one, cannot wait for the film to come out. Um, we're huge Bond fans, and we're going to be at, at our local IMAX, making sure we've got the best seats in the house for whenever it comes out. I think all the things that we've been talking about so far, I mean, they kind of really demonstrate your commitment to the great outdoors. This, this, this isn't just a job for you, is it? This is an actual way of life for you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, which is why... You know, over lockdown, we were at camp, and as I say, and then when lockdown sort of started easing off, uh, we've we are, we've probably done more camping this year as a family than than ever before. Um, and that's because you've had a bit more of an opportunity to be at home more. Yeah, and then you know, and and we've we've had the, the motor home this year, which is again it makes it easy with the kids certainly, um, because in the past I've, I've I've had camper vans for years and tents obviously for the last well forty years. Mm. Um, but it's been a bit more logistic. It's just a bit easier to, to just throw the kids and the kit in the motorhome and just take off, even just for a night or a day. In fact, last what weekend before last week, the school started back, and it was the day before the school started back. It was Bex's idea, my, my, my partner. She was just like, right, let's, um, let, let's, let's take the kids out in the motorhome for the morning. So we literally, six in the morning, threw all the stuff in the motorhome, took off about 20 miles up the road to the forest, and just awning out, deck chairs out, table out, cooked breakfast, we all sat outside in the forest eating breakfast, went for a big walk, and then we're, we're back home by lunchtime, so it's going to kind of guerrilla mini camping. And I think this is a really good idea actually, isn't it? I think a lot of people sometimes think, oh, I need to plan something, and I need to go for a, a week or something. But actually, if you stay a bit, maybe a bit more closer to home, because let's face it, there are fantastic sites exactly. uh, all over the country um, that you can visit. Do you think it's a good idea for people to say, just go out a bit more often, maybe a bit closer if that's what you need to do? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I know people who are like, well, I've got to wait for a week off work to go camping. And you don't, you know, you get, you get a two day holiday every week um, called the weekend. So there's no reason why you can't just head out, head out somewhere on, on a Friday on Friday night, stay the night, come back for Saturday morning. If you're busy that weekend doing whatever, doing DIY or whatever you've got planned, um, because the UK is not that big a place, and we've got, I, I, mean, I don't know about I mean, thousands of campsites. They're never that mm. far. I mean, I live in the wide valley. I've got like, I think, there's about 15 campsites within an hour's drive of me at least. Mm. So, 
I mean, yes, going from Bristol to Orkney for a weekend is pointless, but going 30 minutes up the road for an, for an overnighter, that's, you know, that, that's, that's definitely feasible. Uh, or a weekend, maybe do, well, just drive an hour for the weekend, you know. Um, be a bit more spontaneous. And, and, that'll, and, you know, camping allows you to do that, especially now, mm. because if you, I mean, I think hotels are open now again. I haven't used one, but I think they're open. But, but still, there's a lot of kind of rigmarole that goes on with that. And the other big advantage of, of, of camping is it means you're completely self-sufficient. So not only is that, I suppose, safer in, in the current situation, but also it makes you really flexible. And I say to people, look, it takes the stress out because should the situation change, should things worsen or, or whatever, well, you know what, it's no problem. Just pack up and go home. Off you go. You're not relying on buses or trains or planes or airports or anyone else, even taxis. If you want to, you can just pack up, drive home. Fantastic idea. Let's come back a bit then to when you first started because obviously being intense as something that you've been doing uh, throughout your military career and also since leaving, um, there are a lot of new people that have joined the club. Um, I, I imagine partly because of what's been going on and that freedom it does and flexibility offers you. Have you got any advice for people who have got a fantastic new tent, uh, but they're maybe just a little bit worried about getting out there for the first time, where to go, how to set things up? Any bits of advice from, for people with tents? Yeah, I mean, first thing is, is pitch it in your back garden. And if you can't mm. get a back garden, then you know, just go to the local park. It's nothing illegal about pitching your tent. You probably can't stay overnight, but you just, just put it up because the first time you put it up, you don't want to be in the campsite, under pressure, especially if it's raining. You know, you want to be able to put it up in nice and nice weather, just pitch it. I mean, if it's not that big, you can stick it up in the house. You might not be able to peg it mm. out. We can just put it up physically so you've seen mm. the poles and you've got your hands on. Have a good practice yeah, first. Yeah, a bit of, bit of rehearsal is always handy just to get, it takes the stress out of when you turn up to the campsite. Um, think about how you're going to pitch it and, and fill it if it's raining, because it does occasionally rain in the UK. Although actually, saying that, we've had a, we've had a great six it's months. It's been amazing, hasn't it, yeah. the weather? Yeah. Um, but you know, so think about keeping stuff dry. So pitch your tent first, and then think about getting stuff in. And, and uh, the other thing that I would say, and this applies to tents, probably more so than camper vans or motorhomes or caravans, although I, I personally can't it all the way through, is keep things organized. So I've got lots of little dry, all different colored dry bags. Um, and it's less about keeping them waterproof and more just about using your dry bags as like little drawers. So in my tent, you know, if I'm say my mom on an expedition, I'll have my um, I'll have my, my roll mat and my sleeping bag on one side, and then what you've got is like basically lots of little dry bags, different colours. So my pants are in a red one, my socks are in a green one, my t-shirts in a slightly bigger black one. Um, so that if I need things, I can go, well, that's there. You so know. you know what's exactly. what, rather than just, diving through one yeah, big bag. Makes life so oh, and the other thing is have a spare dry bag for washing. So your dirty washing is in your dry bag and it just, because then your tent doesn't have the smell of, of dirty washing. This is a wholly good idea, I like yeah. this. Um, now I do know that obviously you've been um, using tents, uh, caravans, camper vans um, for many, many years, but you, you have been using a motorhome for the last kind of 12 months and that was quite new to you, wasn't it? How did, how, how did that go and what kind of advice would you give to people if they're getting their first motorhome? Yeah, so I've had the motorhome, I mean, I, my first experience was last summer and then really I've only been in it since about February. Uh, so if I've had one parked up in the driveway since, since February. Um, so you know, motorhomes are, were are relatively new, new to me. Um, I think there's things to learn. Uh, actually, this applies to where you work with your car, where your tents, camper vans, motorhomes, caravans. You know, don't be afraid to ask for a start, and um, you know, don't be embarrassed that you don't know stuff because we've all we've all been there. We've all been there. When I first moved from tents to camper vans, a camper van has got fresh water and it's got wastewater. And the first I went to a campsite, and this guy's like, "Oh, and your, your grey water goes over there." I didn't know what grey water was. I was like, mm. what's grey water? Oh, that, that was your wastewater. And then we moved up to motorhomes. Um, we've got a shower and a toilet in there. And in the toilet, there's, there's pink fluid to go in the flushing bit of it, flushing water, and there's blue to go in the actual toilet removable cassette bit. But initially, I was like, I have, to, I have to Google how to operate these things. And then the first time, actually, you ever emptied the chemical toilet, I mean, once you've done it once, you go, oh, it's really, and it is really easy. But until you've done it once, he's like, there's a bit of nervousness. It's a little bit intimidating because you're walking, yeah. you're walking through the, the um, you're walking through the like the, the campsite with trundling your your full toilet there, mm. and you're like, am I going to the right place? Is this the right thing? And you know, you, but see, everyone's been there because everyone's done it for the first time. 
So, um, and I mean, the club's got resources that they, they, can, they can point in the right direction of how to do these things, but also ask at the sites. There's, there's plenty of people there who, who, who um, can lend a hand. Well, there say, are two very good ways of doing this, aren't yeah. there? You mentioned the club itself. So the, the website has got lots and lots of information there. Um, you, you can speak to people, you can, you can phone the club yeah. and have a chat with somebody. Uh, we've got a very good technical department. There's lots of kind of data sheets and things you can find out as well. So the club is a very useful part for it. But I think you're right as well on the, the sites themselves, particularly the club sites, yeah. all the members are really happy to help you out, aren't they? And yeah. give you a bit of advice. And particularly if you're new to it and feeling a bit nervous. It's happened to me. I took, because when I had camper vans, it's usually a lot of wild camping I was doing. So I very seldom at the campsites. With the motorhome, clear, you, you go to a campsite. So I'd always filled the, um, the, my freshwater tank in the, uh, in the camper vans at home or at somebody's house or that sort of thing. With the motor home, I, I turned, tipped up and, uh, and thought, right, I'll fill it at the, the site. But most people carry their own length of hose to plug into the tap to fill the, you know, to fill the water tank, mm. which I didn't have, because I was like, oh, I just, I thought it would come with a hose. I mean, and I asked somebody and they're like, oh, you borrow ours. Like, mm. Yeah, that's fine, just borrow ours, it wasn't a problem. But yeah, there's a lot of things like that that you, um, you, know, you can ask, but, but say, like, trust me, I've made so many mistakes. Um, and then one of the biggest ones is probably try, is not asking soon enough mm. about how does this work. Try to work out on my own, and then you know you make mistakes, and then you end up having to ask anyway. Maybe maybe be, maybe I've suffered from you know not wanting to appear that I didn't know what I was doing, but actually say we've all been there. And once you've done it once, you realise it's actually really easy. Absolutely. Now I know you've been um, travelling with the motorhome uh, in the UK quite a lot. You've been using it in the driveway, which I think is a brilliant idea as well. Yeah. That's really really cool. But you actually went a bit further afield, didn't you? Do you went to was it France you went to? We, we went to France. That was went to France in uh, that was last year um, to this amazing five star luxury campsite. It is it is fantastic. One of our affiliates, of course. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on the site. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's on the site. Um, it's called Le Pin Palaiso. Um, I am not sponsored by them. It's just a really really nice site with like loads of swimming pools and it's just really well done. But what was the experience like um, travelling in a foreign country with a motorhome? How was that? Was that all good? Fine. Yeah. I mean, that, well, that was our first time in a motorhome, really. Um, so it took. A, I mean, initially, you know, it, it seems a big vehicle, but you jump in. Once you start driving, actually, it's, it's nice to drive because it's the bigger vehicle that is set up to be driven as a bigger vehicle. So you're up higher. It's just it's actually much easier to drive. And actually, Bex does a lot of the driving when we are holding as a family, because she mm. loves driving the motorhome, even though it's like seven and a half metres long, she mm. loves driving it. Um, in fact, for that trip, she drove it to France on her own with two kids. Because, Fantastic. because Bond over ran, and I was supposed to finish on the Friday for a, a week off, but we had to film <laughs> on the Monday and Tuesday. So on the Saturday morning, Bex had to drive the motorhome to France on her own, and I flew out on the Tuesday night. Um, so, you know, again, people say, oh, motorhomes are big machines and it's quite intimidating and I, and I appreciate that because yeah. it, it was for us. But actually, it, me and Bex drive it all the time and we've never had any problems. And, and, but again, until you've driven it for, for the first time, it seems really intimidating. Mm. Once you've driven it once, you're like, oh, this is not half as bad as I imagined, you know, type of thing. So um, and it was just nice, actually, to have that extra space in, the, in, a, in a motorhome that you get compared to, say, a camper van when you've got two kids. For a family of four, it is, it, it's, a, it's just nice to have a a bigger bit of space. I love this. You're constantly working your way from tents, camper vans, caravans, motorhomes, and everything in between, aren't you? You just you're not necessarily fixed on one thing. You're no. experiencing all of these different things. You know, it's it's kind of it's it's, it's what what works best. I also mm. when I'm talking about diving as well. I do cave diving, but I also do like free diving and snorkeling. Sometimes, you know, you want to use a snorkel, and sometimes you want to use a closed circuit rebreather with breathing mixed gases. It just depends what job mm. you're doing. If I'm if I'm off uh, myself for a night. I might just take a tent, you know, or if I'm off up a mountain, got a camp up a mountain, clear, I'm going to take a tent there. But if we're going with the family, we'll take the motor home. Or if I'm away for a longer period of time, I, went, mm. I was in Cornwall for 10 days doing some free diving, filming and stuff. So I took the motor home then because you've then got basically a little, I don't know what you call it, like a bed sit, and you're in there mm. for, for 10 days. Uh, and it means you can cook for yourself and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and especially to sit over, because that was just after lockdown finished. So it was nice to be self sufficient. Um, you know, your own toilet and shower and fridge and cooking lots of stuff and you could kind of be a bit more isolated. Now I'm just thinking about some of the other things that happened in lockdown. Um, you did some really great quizzes, didn't you? Oh yeah! The Facebook Live quizzes yeah, for the club. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I think two or three on the, yeah, the club's Facebook page would do quizzes. Um, 
And from the motorhome as well. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I'm actually got it set up. I actually got the Wi-Fi to kind of transmit far enough into the driveway that I could I could did it all sat sat in the motorhome, having a beer. Um, I did wonder if I could be taken off the air because I was quite relaxed with the whole thing. I think these things, you, know, you, you tongue in cheek, you got kind of uh, you got a bit of fun. And so the first night, I thought, well, it's a pub quiz, so I should be having a beer. Um, and then I was asked back, surprisingly. So I thought, well, that's that's okay. Obviously, I wasn't wasn't. And really well supported. Be thousands and thousands yeah. of people took part in them each time. It was Brilliant good. fun. It was. I mean, I, I genuinely, I, I really enjoyed those things because I just, because I, I, I like doing the live because I did a lot of live stuff actually over over lockdown because that's kind of the way things went, um, and I really enjoy the live stuff because it's fun. So you can. You can almost afford to make more mistakes in no one minds yeah. because it's live. People yeah. are more forgiving. You can have a bit more of a laugh. You can kind of go a bit more off piste um, with stuff, uh, which I tended to do. Um, so yeah, I, I actually find the live stuff a bit more relaxing, to be honest. So absolutely. Let's just have a little, um, just as we kind of round things up. Let's have a little think about what we think may or may not happen in the next few months. I know that you write um, for the club magazine on a very regular basis. Um, have you got any thoughts on what articles you've really enjoyed writing over the last 12 months? And what do you think you would like to write about going forward in the next few months? Yeah, well, um, there's one that I think will be out a month, uh, next month, um, about city camping. So city breaks, I mean, cities have become, we've seen tourism drop massively off because people, if they're wanting to get a trip away, they're, they're staying nationally at least in the uk but they want to get out to the to the, the sort of fresh air in the wells and i understand that wholly but there's a lot of um sites around the uk that, have, that, that are in within the city so myself and bex we did a um a couple of days in oxford the, the club's got a site in oxford it's literally it's a mile i think from the um from the, from mm. the very very center of, the, of oxford so you can walk it in like 15 minutes or it's a pound 80 on the bus there's a bus stop right outside the site um so it's nice to kind of because people wouldn't normally associate camping with a city mm. break but actually that we have got this potential you know around the country um so that's that's a nice one because it's nice to introduce people to the things they may not have thought about it yeah you know so using your camping whether that be your tent to a, to a motorhome but using it a slightly different way um and then well, what i'd like to be it'd be lovely to write about getting further afield um you know i'd like maybe go up to scotland in winter time um you know take the kids and, and go and see some snow be lovely to be able to write about going back to France or Germany or Spain or Portugal. I'd planned for all those sort of places this year, mm -hmm. um, and that's not happening at the moment. So, but I mean, plans-wise, there's nothing really because I've learnt this year you can't make plans too far in advance. I've got ideas, I've got ideas. Some are UK-based, local UK-based stuff. I maybe Pembroke, so a couple of hours from home. Some UK based, you know, all the way up to the Highlands of Scotland, but for their field. Some Europe based, you know, say maybe the North France or as far as the the South kind of Portuguese coastline. But you know, I don't I don't think I'll plan too far ahead at the moment because uh, say, I say my predictions of how this year have run have been wrong about every <laughs> single time I've tried. So I've just given up trying. So just have your kit ready and be ready yeah. to go on short notice for, for short mini adventures. Yeah, and that's the beauty of camping. And I've said it in, in, in articles, I've said it in blogs and in, in podcasts, I've done not just for the club, but for other people. But the big thing about camping, I mean, camping is such, or the ability to go camping is a great asset for this year mm. because it allows you to be self-sufficient and self-reliant, which is very important from a safety point of view, but what it allows you to be super flexible to just, as we have done is like, you know, to ring up a campsite or to ring around the campsites and, and find one that has, has got space because camping has become very popular. Um, and then go right, throw yourself the car or the motorhome or camper van or whatever it is, and let's go. And this let's is the beauty, off. isn't it? All, all of our club members here, you've all got that opportunity. There's a great team of people who can help you either on the website, online, or in person on, on the phone. Yeah. They're ready to help you to just make the most of all the wonderful things that we've got in the, in the UK and further afield. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much for joining us. Um, can't wait to find out um, what's going to happen next time we see you and all the other things that you will uh, will have got up to in the meantime. Can't wait for the Bond film. Um, are you thinking of maybe getting out and doing a bit of winter camping yourself in the motorhome as well? Yeah, yeah. So um, 
I say I'm, I'm hoping to get up to Scotland and then this, uh, well actually no I'm, I'm, what my plan is because again being flexible my plan is to take the kids where there's snow yeah. so wherever that is if the Brecon Beacon is only an hour from my house if the summers get, in some winters you, they'll get snow there we'll go there for a few days if the only snow is in North Scotland we'll go there but probably for maybe for a week because no mm. point driving to you know past Inverness for, Make the most for of a it night longer period of time yeah. Yeah. so I think our, our winter sort of holiday uh, will depend on where there's snow really so thanks very much, Andy. Great to see you as always. Uh, and for those of you watching, Andy will be answering your questions on the club's Facebook page straight after this. So make sure you get your comments in now and uh, enjoy the rest of Friendly Friday.